This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Deep in the sacred forges of my basement, I've been hard at work. I'm building a full-size Imperator, the largest Titan class in the Warhammer 40,000 universe. It's a gigantic Warwalker with a cathedral on its back, and it's absolutely awesome. Previously, I outlined my plan to make this walking god machine, building a tiny epic scale version to serve as a guide for when I make the larger Titan. That bigger version will be just under 7 feet tall, and will be composed of modular components so I can use the individual pieces on the tabletop. But since my last video, the project has gotten even bigger, but we'll talk about that later. Let me start by updating you on what I've been up to in the weeks since my last video. Getting this project off the ground was slow going, because there were a bunch of challenges that I wasn't sure how to solve to make this thing happen. The first challenge was a really, really important one. How am I going to make this thing structurally sound enough to stand up? Well, I'm not an engineer, but I quickly realized that I would need to have some internal structure to support the weight of this creation. And as for the weight, well, I don't know the weight because I haven't built the thing yet and I'm not sure exactly what the dimensions are going to be or what exact materials I'm going to use, so it'll be hard to calculate it with any precision. Nonetheless, I decided to fall back on an idea that I've seen other people do before, which is to use a skeleton made out of PVC pipes. So I headed to Home Depot to get some supplies. And this is when something really cool happened. This really nice guy who works at my local Home Depot was helping me and he was answering all these questions about what the best PVC glue was and kind of trying to figure out what exactly I was trying to do. And as it turns out, he used to be a 40k player in high school so he knew exactly what an Imperator Titan was. The chances of this happening I think are pretty slim so I took this as a really good omen for the project. He immediately became super enthusiastic and helped me find all the pieces that I need. He helped me choose these heavy duty brackets that I can bolt into a base that the PVC pipes will slot into. Thanks Isaac. So I bolted these brackets into some particle board, built a rough hip structure, and then tested by putting my weight on the axle. I'm satisfied that this will be strong enough, so let's start building the Titan itself. It just feels natural to start building from the ground up, so let's start with the legs. These huge elephantine legs are one of the most iconic parts of the Imperator's silhouette, so definitely something that I want to keep in my design. In order to build this, my approach will be to break the piece down into simple shapes, then keep refining with detail until the very end. The first place to start is obviously this huge cone shape, which looks to me like a flower pot. So let's see if we can find a suitable flower pot at the local garden center. I want something that's just the right angle, but also the right material. I need something that's thin enough to cut without too much trouble, but thick enough to have some structural strength. Wait a minute, is that the price? Ah! Oh! This other one is very similar, but about half the price, so let's go with this one. It's still pretty expensive, but I think it's going to be worth it. Because the pot shape is only on the shins, I'll only need one pot that I can cut in half. Anyways, I bought my pot back to the workshop and set about bisecting this bad boy. I marked it out with tape. Now it's important to look extremely cool when you work on things like this, so I put on my tactical safety shades and hot pink respirator, busted out my Dremel tool, and cut into this thing. I want to make it look less like a styrofoam coffee cup and I need to get the proper angle at the ankle. Same process. More Dremel baby. Alright, just like that we have some shins. I cut a nice round piece of foam to mount the shin pieces on. And if you're thinking, damn Eric, that is the most imprecisely cut large diameter circle of foam I have ever seen, well, you're not wrong. We can fix that later. I put a beautiful back piece on with another large piece of foam. What do you think? Nice! The front pose is a really interesting challenge. How am I going to get something symmetrical and decent looking given the curve and angle of the shin pot? If I'm honest, I think the front shin on my Epic 40k model looks pretty bad. Trying to curve the windows around the edge of the pot shape is just not something I looked forward to and I didn't think it would look really good even if I did it well. So I changed the design. I decided to make a gothic type structure that would echo the cathedral-like elements that will eventually be on the top, with two towers flanking a roughly square space in the center that will be the main entrance gate. Wait a minute, did I just say square space? I sure did. If you want to get any of the materials used in today's project, go check out the website I made using Squarespace in the links below. Using Squarespace's tools, I was able to put together a website that's going to be a hub for showcasing my work, linking to products I use, and selling merch like my t-shirt designs. So far, it's been really intuitive and easy to use, and I'd recommend it to anybody, which is why I'm telling you guys about it. They've optimized it so it adjusts itself based on whatever device you're using, and it always looks great. 
So head to squarespace.com slash Eric's Hobby Workshop to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain using the code Eric's Hobby Workshop. Thank you, Squarespace, for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to it. The load-bearing steel structure of the Imperator's leg comes down on an angle here, so I block that in with more thick foam. Everything is very simple at this stage, but this will provide the basis for all the detail work later. This shape, for example, will be covered with huge pistons and steel plates. I need to cut a hole to accommodate the PVC pipe that will act as a structural support. This reminds me of in cartoons when they're sawing through the ice on a frozen lake. Anyways, I eat that pipe in there and as you can see, we now have a long smooth shaft that goes from about waist height to the ankles. <clears throat> you might be saying, well, what is that supposed to be? You just told me the bit next to it is supposed to be the steel load bearing leg component, so what's that? Well, get this. It's the stairs. That's right, according to the Harris Heresy novel False Gods, there is a spiral staircase that you can take from the bottom of an Imperator Titan up to the bridge. This has maybe been kind of retconned. In the Hell's Reach novel, for example, a priest leaves an Imperator Titan while it's in mid-stride and he has to climb down a ladder on the exterior of the Titan. But I figure that uh, my Titan's gonna have the classy interior spiral staircase, so we're going with that. It doesn't make sense for the staircase to pass through the load-bearing structure of the knee, but I'm gonna to have to make some efforts later to camouflage it so it won't look like it would impede the step of the Titan. Now I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Eric, why would they put the stairs on the outside of the Titan? Isn't that kind of a weird and crazy design? The real question is, why would they do any of this? This has gotta be one of the most impractical things ever designed, but that's not the point. Forget for a second that this thing couldn't take even one step without falling over just based on the weight distribution and the shape of it alone. That's not the point. There's only one reason for an Imperator Titan. When you see that thing on the horizon, it looks like a physical manifestation of the Machine God. It's impossible to gaze upon one of these monstrosities and not feel fear and awe at the power of the Mechanicum of Mars. That's the point of an Imperator Titan. As far as I'm concerned, this thing has two requirements only. One is to look extremely badass. The second is to stay upright. Anyways, long digression aside, let's crack on. Building something like this uses a lot of foam and makes a lot of foam scraps. But sometimes if you keep your eye out, you get lucky and you find three scraps like this, which when I put together, make the perfect front facade for above my gateway. What a lucky break. I added some stairs to the big toe in front of the gateway, but then I had a thought that it would be more tank friendly if there were some ramps coming down here as well. So I made that happen. Now that's a big toe. Now as you can see, tanks can drive freely in and out of this bad boy. As I mentioned in the first video, an Imperator should be able to house an entire legion of Skitari or Guardsmen. Now that you see the relative size, I hope you understand why I aim for the higher estimate in terms of canonical height. It simply doesn't make sense to me that you would be able to get that many soldiers into the structure like this if it was half the size. All said and done, this thing will be over 100 meters tall in 40k scale height, and I think that was the right choice. So the Epic Mini has these nice four gothic windows on the front of the shin, and I wanted to keep that stylistic element, so I made a jig and I cut out some of those. Now I've been slowly teaching myself some 3D modeling, and I've started making my own STL files to 3D print for finicky things like windows. Every time I make an STL file, I'll make it accessible to my patrons, and I hope to make a lot more in the coming months. So speaking of which, if you want to become a patron, I've decided that every patron of mine will get their name somewhere on the finished Titan. So if you want your name on the biggest and most exciting project ever, head down to the link in the description and sign up. I'm also giving away a ton of stuff to my patrons this month because they are the thrumming plasma reactor at the heart of this channel, and I'm very appreciative of them. Looking at the back of the structure, I had some fleeting and dangerous thoughts about making the interior detailed and accessible, but I thought better of it and I glued the back shut. I built the basic shape with a massive thigh beam from foam, and then attached it with a thick piece of dowel for strength. I used some very hungry Pac-Mans of foam to make the beginnings of the knee joint as well. The top of the hit piece I just added is over 30 inches tall. That's over 8 inches taller than a Forge World Warmaster Titan already. This actually reminds me of a fairly frequent comment that I got on my first video about the Imperator. That the Imperator is not the biggest Titan. There's a bigger one called the Castigator Titan. So let's take a quick look at the Castigator Titan. Hmm. It is made in the dark age of technology, one of a kind, has muscles, 
its head is on top of its shoulders instead of the Chad Hunch of the other Titans. It's fully artificially intelligent, which is forbidden. It was corrupted by chaos, and it no longer exists because it was destroyed by the Grey Knights. Hmm. I wonder why I didn't count the muscle-bound AI demon-corrupted one-of-a-kind titan that doesn't exist anymore. Must have just slipped my mind. Part of my personal stylistic touch that I added to this piece was to add a bunch more little tiny gothic spires. I think this really improves the silhouette and is going to echo nicely the gothic feel of the top of the piece. I said it before, but I'll repeat it. I reserve the right to take whatever artistic liberties I want with this thing. It's my project. I'll do it how I want. Ooh, I almost forgot. I had this crazy idea to make this project even bigger. Hear me out. I was thinking about how much of a shame it is that I'll seldom, if ever, be able to use this thing on the table. So I came up with this idea to make a giant hanger backdrop that the Titan will stand in front of. That way I can have gangplanks and scaffolding and gantries and all sorts of ways for models to crawl up and down and all around the model itself. Some people in the comments were suggesting that I should make a kill team table on the back of the Titan itself, but why not make the entire Titan a kill team slash Necromunda battlefield? It will add some extra work, but if I do it right and the back pieces are also modular, I can make individual smaller boards out of each piece of the Titan as if it's undergoing maintenance in separate pieces in different hangars. I could even potentially host my own tournament where all of the battles take place on different parts of my Titan. Wouldn't that be cool? What do you guys think? Is it worthwhile doing? So here you can see how the load bearing component of the leg or the spiral staircase is going to work with the foam piece. In a future video, I'm going to add all sorts of pistons that are going to thicken up the appearance of this leg even more because in my opinion, the original Titan is a little bit too scrawny in the legs. And that's as far as I got today, guys. It may not seem like I'm that far along this project, but I am really excited by how it's going. Some of the major stylistic and technical challenges that were holding me back are now conquered and it's full steam ahead. I know it's been a while since the last update and I've released several other projects by then and now you may notice that those projects, each of them had components in it that were essentially practice for the techniques I was going to use on this project. I won't lie guys, I was kind of procrastinating a little bit. This project is pretty intimidating and I didn't know where to start but now that I've started I feel like I've broken into it and I have momentum and I don't want to stop. Updates will be more frequent from here on out so if you want to be along for the ride please subscribe to the channel and consider following me on Patreon. I hope you enjoyed this video guys and we'll see you next time on Eric's Hobby Workshop.